cool. Let me pop this up. So anyway, let's get started here. I'm just gonna give a brief overview of like this whole one-sided rollback problem that keeps popping up in various games. You know, this is something that's been solved ever since basically GTPO. I, I think they solved it even back in the old versions, uh, like in 2006 and seven with Alpha 2 on the system, but somehow it still persists. So uh, yeah, I'm going to just cover it really quick. Um, and where's my pointer? Okay. Okay, the first thing I really want people to understand, and I'm just gonna start from the very, very, very basics here, is uh, actually how your buttons transmit to the game and uh, result in, you know, actually what you see on screen, okay? So the, the first concept, I really just, it's very basic and it's pretty obvious, but I mean, your buttons cause something uh, in the game to change, right? It's very simple, this concept. I, I know uh, it feels a little silly to start from here, but please hang with me a little bit. Okay. And I just want to start with the basics, just in case some people are not aware of a lot of this stuff. It might, it ends up being a little too abstract a lot of the time. So I want to make it as concrete as possible. And so, um, yeah, so when you're playing games with your friends, right, locally, uh, maybe at a local or something, and you have a console set up right running the game i'm just going to represent it with like a little computer icon here um you got your controller your joystick whatnot right um and you're on the player one side and you have your friend who has his own joystick right and that's going to be on the player two side and it's both connected to the same game console right it's local you see the results on screen as soon as you press the button that's the most important thing to understand at this level um, so, for example, you press the light punch button in Street Fighter, you get a jab, press up, you get a jump, you do SRK motion, you get reused Dragon Punch. That's it for now. I Hopefully that's comprehensible to everybody. Everybody has this experience. We should be good here, right? Okay. Um, if you do have questions, don't feel free to speak up. I'll be paying attention to this, the stream chat just to make sure we don't lose anybody. Okay, so how do we go from this local game to a game where you can play over the internet? You're playing from your own home uh, to your friend's home who might be across the country, right? Uh, well, instead of having one game console, it's very complicated, we're gonna have, well, I'll move this a little bit, we're gonna have two game consoles. So you have your own screen and console set up and your friend has one too, right? All the way across the country. Uh, forgive my drawing ability. I know it is not the best, but please hold on. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm just going to copy the joysticks here so I don't have to draw this 100 times. <laughs> um, so instead of your joystick, uh, let, me, let me pick this up. Instead of your joystick being uh, connected to, well, instead of both your joysticks being connected to one system, now you have uh, two joysticks connected to two different systems directly by an actual wire that's plugged into a USB port or whatnot. In older consoles, it's a serial port, but um, that's really not the point. Anyway, it's connected through a cable or something. So you're on the P1 side, they're on the P2 side, player one, player two, right? Um, and these computers are connected by a series of wires <laughs> and routers, but we're just gonna represent it as a single connection. Um, you're sending your own inputs on your side to your opponent's computer through this connection and vice versa they're sending their inputs to you right conceptually I want you to think of it as you're sending your inputs directly to their computer right you could imagine actually having a cable connected across the country if you wanted to directly to the computer and it would be the same results you press a button and action happens on their side and if they press a button, an action happens on your side. Same thing as when you, in the case where you had to connect it to a single console, you both of you are playing at. Okay, I hope that's comprehensible to everybody, understandable. And so that's point number two: is we need to send send uh, our buttons or inputs to both to both computers. Send inputs to both computers. Yeah. Uh, across a connection. This is number two. 
uh, this point is important. I, I want everybody to understand this point before we move on. So by pressing a button, you actually have results on screen on both sides, right? You have, in fact, you have the same thing happen on both sides. That's the idea, right? You need to have the same thing happen on both sides so that both of you are experiencing the same game. This is actually our synchronization technique, right? Other games have other ways of synchronizing uh, the game state or what you see on screen. First person shoot shooters famously have servers in the middle that keep track of the game and then they send all the actual information about the game state to each client and updates what each player is seeing on their screen directly that way. We're sending input. We're sending uh, up, down, left, right, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever, how many buttons you have, actually over a wire. And it's getting sent to the game directly. And the game's responding to those inputs, to those buttons, by doing the corresponding move on screen. And it needs to be the same for both sides. Does uh, anybody have any questions about this part of it? Uh, if you don't get this part, it's going to become more and more abstract, difficult <laughs> as we go on. Because we're about to get into the whole issue of timing, latency, and uh, how we synchronize there. Okay. Cool. So this is all well and good. We're able to cause effects on each other's screens, right? We actually, in fact, have the same thing come out on both screens because we are receiving both, uh, we're receiving the same input on both of our sides, my side and my friend's side, right? On the P2 si P1 side and the P2 side. Cool, that's great, but there is a problem. <laughs> As anyone, everyone knows, it takes time uh, to, to send any information over the internet, not only because of distance, but because of routing. Um, more or less, you know, you might have low latency if things are close to you in general, uh, more latency if they're far away, but it's not exactly true because of how the internet's actually routed. It might actually have to take more steps, uh, the information which is transmitted through packets, but it's not that detail is not that important. Just know it takes time. So the third point, uh, oops, okay. The third point I want everybody to understand here is, can everybody see that? Is that it takes time to send information. A little abstract, but the point here is that there's going to be delay when you press the button. Okay? So, right, so when you send your friend's, uh, when you send your friend a uh, input over the internet here, wait, can you see my mouse cursor? Well, I actually don't know. <laughs> I probably should uh, make sure you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I'm just going to copy this whole diagram so I can reuse it. Ew. Okay. Can I, um, I'm, still, I'm get, still getting used to this whiteboard app. No. Okay. Cool. Nah, it's not ideal, sadly. The only way to select things is this lasso tool. I just want to move it. Okay, here we go. So cool. Sending stuff over the internet takes time. I'm going to delete this abstract connection here. Um, for example, if they're like five or so frame, well, let's make it easy. If they're, uh, if the ping is 100 milliseconds, that's going to be a one side travel time of uh, 50 milliseconds, right? So, uh, yeah, this side I'm sending, it's going to take 50 milliseconds, and when it comes back, it's also going to be 50 milliseconds, right? If we transmit the t this to like game time, um, we would say something like, it would be, can you see a calculator here? I don't know if it'll pop up, probably not. Uh, <laughs> anyway, give me a second, one second. I'm taking, uh, uh, I hope this is understandable everybody. When we send our inputs across the internet, it's gonna take time, there's gonna be delay, right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about what the delay leads to here in a second. Cool. Um, yeah. Okay. So, whoops, I didn't want to do that. Ch -ch -ch. 
Okay, so if it takes 50 milliseconds for our input to get across the internet, that's about three three frames in our game in game time, right? I hope you know we all know what frames refers to here. Uh, our game's running at 60 frames per second or 60 hertz, and it's just the smallest piece of uh, <laughs> time that you know the games can actually um, update in. So uh, that's generally 16.666 repeating <laughs> milliseconds. Just d divide that by uh, divide 50 by that, and you get about three frames. Anyway, okay, so I'm gonna take this slowly. <laughs> so this is where all the problems of uh, game networking pop up. It's because of this delay. And in, uh, in common vernacular, everybody refers it at, to it as lag, right? Uh, the time it takes to travel, send information across the internet, uh, that's lag. And I'm not gonna go directly into all the ways we deal with it yet. I'm gonna take this step by step. So as before, as we discussed, when I send input to my screen, I also need to send input to my friend's game as well. And, and they'll see the results on the screen. But because of this latency, the thing I do is gonna come out later, right? If we just s start with this very simple scheme, it takes three frames to travel across the internet. I'm gonna see what I have immediately on my side, right? But they're gonna see, see it with a three frame delay. So now we're not seeing the same thing anymore at the same time. Yeah, my move's gonna come out, but it's gonna come out later for them. And what, what is the problem here, right? Well, again, these games go on updating at 60 frames per second, right? So on my side, because the move just came out, there's no lag whatsoever, right? Things are immediate. And then three frames within the game itself passes by on their side. Then the move comes out. They've happened at different times within the game itself. This is the whole problem, right? So we can't use this scheme. Um, for example, if we both press punch at the same time, normally if we're facing each other, it's gonna trade or in some games clash. Um, we expect them to become active on the same frame. You know, if you have a three frame move, it's gonna hit on frame three. Great, locally that works. But in this scheme, my move comes out first, right, on my side. And your move comes out with a three frame delay on my side and on their side, same thing. Well, opposite. <laughs> their move comes out first and my move comes out three frames later. We have a problem now. We're seeing different things on our screens, right? Now we're playing in a game world that is no longer consistent. It's no longer the same. We say that it's desynchronized. Uh, this idea of desynchronization is very important. So this whole scheme doesn't work. And we have to do something else to deal with it. And how do we deal with it? Well, one thing we could do is not update our game until we get input from the player, right? We could literally just like wait. Um, so I send, I wait on your input, you wait on my input, right? Um, and I wish a good way, a good way to explain this through a drawing. Um, I'm gonna start using this kind of frame diagram. I hope it's clear not too abstract. Um, yeah, so I'm basically gonna have a timeline here, right? And I'm gonna start counting frames in the game, just going one, frame one, frame two, frame three, frame four. So before I do anything, I wait, right? So I'm gonna wait. This is on P1 side, right? And player two is also gonna wait, right? He has his own game update timeline. I um, hope, uh, hope it's understandable. The future is over here on the right. Yeah, the past is over here. So I'm going left to right. Um, I'm gonna wait on his inputs. So I'm gonna send my inputs to him. He's gonna send his inputs, his player, his control inputs to me, right? And I'm gonna represent that by a line, a connection, going from his side. And for me, it's gonna go to his side. So we're both waiting for these inputs to travel across the internet. And we're gonna stick to the previous ping time earlier, 50 milliseconds. So 
this input it's going to take 50 milliseconds to travel right on both sides or three frames uh, I don't know what's preferable to you guys I'm just gonna stick with milliseconds for now um, I should probably switch the fr frames to make it simpler after this but for now milliseconds okay so we're both waiting and we finally get at this time 50 milliseconds later we finally get input so we update our game, right? And we finally see an image on screen or see a change on screen, right? And the move starts coming out over here. This is uh, our first game frame, right? This could be any game frame within our update, but we're just starting with a first, right? So this is great. We've got each of our inputs at the same time. If I press punch, you press punch, travels across the internet, our punch moves come out at the same time, they trade. Awesome. Sorry to say my mic. I hope that's understandable at this point. Um, I want people to get this before we move on. So this whole scheme, we, we kind of refer to as lockstep. We do everything in step with each other, right? It's also kind of called dead reckoning. Don't worry too much about that, but like lockstep. So we don't do anything until we receive a signal from the other player. Um, I hope you can see the problem with this, though. We don't update until we get the input. That means we have to wait. So what actually happens after the first game frame, you know, the, the problem is we have to keep waiting. <laughs> we still have to keep waiting. Um, and actually, we don't, we have to wait again. So we waited the number of frames, three frames or 50 milliseconds. And then uh, we have to wait again, actually, because during this whole time, you weren't pressing any buttons, right? There was nothing for you on screen to react to or interact with. So three frames have passed by while you're waiting on input from your other player. So no, you don't have any new inputs to transmit. So you can only start sending inputs again after you received input from your friend on the other side of the internet or other side of the country. So again, we get over here, the timeline passes by we send input again and 50 more milliseconds pass by and then again we get another frame right here sometime in the future and we continue the scheme over and over and over again but your 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 game's only updating every um, 50 milliseconds or so that's not really great uh, I don't know how many frames a second that is but it's not gonna feel awesome and it's, you're gonna drop inputs as you're trying to actually press them so we can't use this scheme right we stay synchronized. It's great. We see the same thing on screen at the same time. Our game states, we say, are consistent. They're the same. But the problem is our game's not running at 68 FPS. It's holding. It's waiting for the signal from the other player. Um, is this understandable, comprehensible, or completely crazy? I, I want to answer any questions people have. In theory, we could be reading inputs the entire time and not updating. Yeah. Um, yeah, we could be doing that. But the question is, like, what inputs do we send, right? Uh, I don't want to get too in into input polling. But generally, we poll inputs for a game when we update. So we generally don't want to do that. Um, there's technical reasons for it, but I don't want to cover that here. That's not really, uh, but yeah, you're right. We could technically keep reading inputs and keep sending them. Uh, Purple Streak is saying, I got confused. Is it updating after receiving an input or sending one? It's updating after receiving one. You already have your own, I didn't really make this clear, but you, you input, when you input a um, command, uh, when you press a button, you record it locally, or you know what your input is, right? You don't know what your opponent's input is. You have to wait for them to send it. So you can't update your game until you receive the input from them, the signal, right? That's been transmitted across the internet. And that takes 50 milliseconds in this case. Uh, obviously, it could take any amount of time depending on the state of the internet or how far you are from your opponent or the connection, what have you. 
uh, yes, Havoc, uh, that thing I was talking about before, the theoretical reading input while you're waiting, that it would decouple it, yeah. Um, there might be reasons to do that. I'm not going to cover that here necessarily, but uh, yeah, that is a potential thing. But l a little bit of a diversion from the scheme I'm talking about here. Um, so does everybody understand that point where uh, that the question that Purple Streak had asked that uh, we are updating after receiving our opponent's input? Because we have our input already. Our, 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 so <laughs> we've recorded our own, you know, controller input locally. So we know what it is. We can apply it immediately if we wanted to, but we can't update yet because we need to wait for our opponent's input to stay synchronized, to stay consistent. So we see the same thing on both screens, me and my opponent. Uh, it should be archived. If it isn't, sorry, I'm, I'm going to double check uh, here in a second when I'm done. But yeah, thanks for asking that, Sir Mukona. Is it too expensive to have a server to do matchmaking? Um, I'm not going to cover anything about matchmaking and stuff like that here. This is all entirely about uh, keeping two games in sync over the internet. Yeah. Hold on one second. Okay. Good. Um, I think this point is important to understand. If you get stuck here, the rest is going to be very tricky. So if there's any more questions, please ask. Otherwise, I'm going to move on. I'll give you guys a second here. And actually, let me get some water. Yeah, I'm sorry if this is a little slow for people who already understand all this stuff. I know some of you are waiting for the juicy bit, one side of rollback stuff. We'll get there. Um, but, but I want to make, I can't really explain it without people knowing these base concepts. Otherwise, I can't build up, you know. So, yeah, have to start from where we started from to get to the, the good part. <laughs> cool. All righty. Hey, what's up, Geets? Long time no see. I hope it's things are going good out there. We've been having some nice weather over here. Yeah. What happens when you skip intros? Uh, I'll cover that kind of here in a bit, but not yet. We'll get there. Yeah, first we have to invent the universe, and we're quite we're very much doing that when we make games. Okay. Cool. Next thing. So everybody understands the last point. Oops. That it takes time to send information over the internet. We call lag usually. And I guess point number four I need to point out is to stay synchronized, we have to wait. In this scheme, to, to, to stay synchronized, this is the most important thing. We must to, to say to stay synchronized we apply both player inputs at the same time. This is the important thing with a lockstep. Previously, I had called it lockstep. This is the method I mentioned here. Um, yeah, this is point number four. There's gonna be an exception to this I'm gonna talk about very, very soon. But yeah, this is an important point. And in the scheme, that we applied here, we actually wait. In order to apply inputs on the same frame or at the same time, we wait. We wait on both sides for the, to receive the input. Yeah. Okay, so we have this problem, the game not running at 60 FPS. We have to update, wait, update, wait, update, wait. It's not great. It's not a great scheme. It's not going to be fun. It's going to feel terrible. So how do we solve this problem? So everything from here it's going to be about solving problems that pop up when we want to deal with network latency, right? Problem number one is waiting on input. How do we deal with this? Well, I'm just going to cut to the chase. You already know what, what I'm talking about here. And it's it's uh, delay. It's input delay, actually. So we just delay our own input. 
So we have the similar scheme as before with a uh, timeline on both sides, our games updating on the P1 side, P2 side. Um, we are sending inputs to each other but we don't wait anymore. The new scheme is we just keep updating, right? So we have, these are just frames. These squares represent single game updates. We call them frames. Sorry if my <laughs> drawing ability is not great. I'm not a expert Wacom user. And we're just gonna count these frames, right? So we just keep updating at 60 FPS. That's the new scheme. And our frames occur, the updates occur at the same time on both sides. Um, but the new thing that we need to do to solve this, as I mentioned before, is actually we delay our own input. How does this help? Well, let's say it takes 50 milliseconds or three frames um, to send input over the internet. Well, all we have to do to see the same thing on our side as their side is delay the input by three frames. Um, this diagram's not technically, well, the error really should be hit, you know, should be going to four, see, one, two, one, delay by one, yeah. So actually the error should be going to frame four over here. Don't think about it too much, but we're just gonna say, uh, we delay our own input that we read on frame one and apply it on frame four. So we just count, right? It takes three frames to get over. So one, two, three. And this is the amount of time that's passed. It's three frames or 50 milliseconds. And then finally, we can apply it on four because we have, have their input, right? It traveled across the internet. We have it now. Before we update the game for the fourth time, right? These are just counts of how many times we've updated the game, right? And that's gonna be an important concept moving forward is we count updates. One, two, three, four. Update number four, we have their input. Well, we recorded our input previously, right? Over here on frame one, we, we read our input, we sent it to them and we recorded our own. Now we can apply it on frame four. Uh, they applied on frame four on their side and their own input in the same way we do it. And our screens are consistent they're the same on both sides and we stay synchronized and we keep repeating the scheme over and over and over again, right? We keep doing it. We keep sending input every frame. I'm, hopefully I can be consistent with this. Uh, yeah, and we just, for each frame along this timeline, you know, on this timeline here, we, we send uh, our input. Any questions about that? Um, I think everybody's experienced this in fighting games, right? Uh, the thing is like, Sorry, I just got a message. Yeah, so if anybody's played fighting games the last 20 years-ish, ever since they started going online, you you felt the input delay, right? You felt the lag on your buttons. This is what's going on. Your local game client has to add input delay. It has to add delay on your inputs. It has to delay when it applies it in order to get the same results on your side as their side. This is a scheme that's been implemented in games as long as you know, as many of you, some of you might have been born actually. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's not great. You know, uh, you know, it feels terrible and you can't play people across the world using this scheme. And there's another issue I'm going to bring up here in a second. But before I do that, is there any questions about this scheme? Like, is there anything confusing about it or my explanation of it? so that I can answer those questions and move on, hopefully. <laughs> packet, packet loss is something I don't know if I'm gonna cover, but you know. Yeah. Okay. So concept number four, and number five actually, I think. Concept number five is actually I'm gonna cover. I want to say something important here too. This is our first, not our first. This is our second method of 
compensating for internet latency. This is our internet, sorry, this is our latency compensation method, our internet compensation or <laughs> lag compensation scheme. Our first scheme was to wait. Our second scheme is to delay our own inputs. So, so to deal with lag, we delay our input to be used on the same frame as our, our opponents. That one's not the same frame. I'm gonna say, cause it gets a little confusing, be used at the same time. So to deal with lag, we delay our input to be used at the same time as our opponent. So, yeah, this is again our lag, <laughs> our lag compensation scheme number two, delaying input. This is actually a scheme that's used all over the internet, right? Back in the day, when you were downloading or watching live videos like QuickTime or something, you probably got used to seeing a spinner well, as you as you waited the, for the video to buffer. This is buffering, by the way. You're just recording enough information so that you can continue running the game. The game is consuming input from the player so that it can continue. If we don't have the input, the game can't update. If it does update without input from the opponent, or if it gets it updates and doesn't apply the opponent's input at the same time as the opponent does, we have the same problem that we looked at originally, which is our two games running on two different computers are not consistent. They're different. Players see different things on screen. You can't actually have a competitive match that way. So input buff. I, I don't want to say buffering too much because it gets confused with like the terminology we use for fighting games. But by input delaying our input. Or allow our game to keep running. Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh see, that problem is the lack of consistency. We 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 call desynchronization, and we want to stay synchronized. Oh, dusk no is uh, dusker to our my pleasure. Glad you could stop by. Okay, I don't. Was there any questions here? I, I want to make sure I didn't overlook anybody. Cool. So continue the theme of revealing problems with each of these schemes, uh, where one solution leads to more problems, and we solve those problems. What's the problem here? Well, problem number one, obviously, is we don't like having input delay. It feels bad. Um, there's actually another problem. It's cool and all. We read 50 milliseconds as our ping, right? We recorded it by sending some information to them and maybe timing it with a timer and waiting for that information to come back to us. And we, we saw 100 milliseconds round trip time, right? That, that was our ping. And we just assumed that one side travel time is going to be half of that, 50 milliseconds. We can't actually know for sure what the one side travel time was without some like high accuracy clocks or something. But uh, there's actually there's actually a claim in physics that you can't actually time anything one way. You actually have to record things with round trip time. But anyway, for now, let's just say our one trip, one way <laughs> travel time for our information over the internet, our inputs is half the ping. Okay, so we record 100 milliseconds as our our ping. The, the the problem, though, is the internet isn't stable, right? We all have seen this. We've seen if you've ever played, if any of you have ever played FPS, and you turn on your ping, you can see it fluctuating, going up and down, back and you know, constantly. It doesn't stay at a constant fifty or hundred milliseconds, right? It's just not going to happen. So, what is the result on our game? Well, we didn't make this specific before, but how do we actually? We, we set the delay based on the ping that we saw at the beginning of the game, for example, right? But the thing is, if we don't consistently update it or constantly update our input delay, right, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> what is that problem? The problem is 
we are not going to get the input from the player when we expect it. And if we don't get the input from the player when we expect it, let me move down a little bit here. If we don't get the input when we expect it, we're going to have the problem that we saw up here. What was it here? No, here. Yeah. We have, we're going to have to wait again, right? So again, with this scheme, we're going to send input from player two, player one. We're going to get them at the same time in general. Sorry. It takes 50 milliseconds here. Great. We're still in sync, right? We're able to update our frame at the same time here because we expected this 50 millisecond travel time. We delayed our own input, right? By three frame by 50 milliseconds or three frames. I'm just going to write three frames here. Um, hopefully I can draw three here. <laughs> um, great. We're able to update three, three times by the time we got the input. And by the time we got our opponent's input, we were ready. We could update. Uh, search, search and hoe. I think yeah, I think it'll be available later. Um, I'll I'll make sure the archive is there. If not, I'll record it somehow. Okay, I'm just looking at the chat real quick to make sure I didn't miss anything. When I switch over to the uh, whiteboard app, it's I can't see the chat. I would love to have everything on one screen. Cool. Um, let's see. Awesome. So we have this, we're updating just fine. We expected to receive input after 50 milliseconds because we had previously recorded a ping round trip travel time of 100 milliseconds. But as we said, I said before, the internet is unstable. Sometimes, and not just sometimes, all the time, latency online is fluctuating. It's going up and down, right? It may be 50 sec milliseconds now, might be 60 milliseconds later. If it's, if it's less, it's fine. Uh, we just received input a little bit early, and we save it. Um, okay. Felt a little something there in my stomach. It wasn't great. Um, anyway, if it goes up, though, you know, if the travel time goes from 50 milliseconds to say now it takes 60, uh, let's not say 60, let's make it much bigger, like 80 or something, right? We're updating along, updating along. We're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Um, you know. <laughs> Whoa. Sorry. Feel a little nauseous. Sorry about that. Anyway, one, two, three. Frames have passed. Usually we're you know delaying our input by three frames. So next frame we expect our input. This is a problem. Our input's not well, so our opponent's input is not has not arrived yet, right? We could be <laughs> we could be updating, right? We could we could we could update this frame right here, right? But we don't have their input, and if the our opponent does the same thing, right? His results are going to be different than my ours now. Now we're desynced. Uh, no, no, sorry. This is probably just turn on the air conditioner, actually. I think about it. It's just a little warm. So, if we keep updating, we don't have inputs, we're going to be desynchronized, right? So, the only thing we can do to stay synchronized in this scheme is to wait, as before. So, no, nope, we don't update. Instead of updating, we wait. And I mark that with a big W. We wait. Um, on this side, it's delayed two. This is assumed it's delayed two. So they're going to wait as well. So no, no frame update. We wait. Hold on one second. Okay. Feeling better now. <laughs> okay. Cool. So we wait. And finally, The nearest McDonald. Hmm. I'd love a McMuffin around right, right about now or something. Uh, sausage, egg, cheese would be amazing. Yeah. 
Cool, so uh, after 80 milliseconds, we do get the input and we can update again. So we update the next frame on both sides once we get the input. So it's like that original scheme where we waited for input, then updated, waited for input, and then updated. So the problem, as we can see with this fixed input delay scheme that we're using is if we don't have, if we've not guessed a right input, or sorry, if we have not assumed a high enough input delay from the beginning and the latency online, the lag goes up above the, the amount of time we assumed it would and we applied to our own uh, input delay, we have to wait. And what does waiting mean? Well, waiting means we don't see the game updating. We see it stutter, right? And even worse, we're only reading input when we, right before we update the game, right? So we're just not reading input at all, and we're not even sending input either. That's another whole issue I'm not going to do. You, you, could, you could solve that in various ways, but with our simple scheme, we're dropping inputs now. This is not awesome. And you've, you've probably experienced this online before. You know, you've played a game, and you see, like, everything starts stuttering. Your combos drop. Your timing, obviously, is messed up, but your actual inputs are being dropped as well. It's just not seeing the buttons you pressed. So this scheme isn't great. How do we solve this, right? Well, one thing to do is put sufficiently high enough input delay from the beginning. You could say, in this case, if you assume ping is going to go from 50 milliseconds up to 100, and not much more than that most of the time, uh, you, can, you can, you know, double with a little bit of uh, leeway so your input delay. So say, instead of setting it to 3, set your input delay to 6. It works. Does it feel good? No. But hey, heck, heck, it works. We stay synchronized, and we don't see stuttering. The other thing that you could do is when you detect the uh, ping time, you, you say you constantly ping your opponent, right? If you see the round trip time go up at all, well, conversely, you will stutter a little bit, but you increase your input delay dynamically. And this is a scheme most fighting games have implemented for the longest time. They just, if ping time goes up, they also, to comp compensate, increase local input delay as well. And again, you probably have all experienced this, where things felt like it just suddenly turned into like you're you're jumping through water or something, right? If it, it feels it feels like it has a lot of um, better word. Just, all you can say is lag. It feels laggy, right? It feels slow. It feels lethargic. Yeah. So there's other delay as well. So it, it, it compounds, but I'm not gonna go there. So we're at now. This, this concept here is uh, we're, we're concept we're in concept number six ish. So, so we not only delay our inputs, but we dynamically delay our inputs. So, we change our input delay dynamically um, to compens comp compensate for changing network latency. This is the new concept here. Um, most fighting games have used this for you know, the past two decades. Some fighting games still use it. And here, my friends, is the, <laughs> the infamous delay-based netcode. Now, there's more to it. Hopefully I've brought you from the very basics of how we synchronize games over the internet to where most games have been up until now, right? This delay-based netcode, the, the scary word, right? So we've come a long way. I know it's been very slow. But I want to make sure everybody's following along. Um, if anything I've explained here has not been clear, if there's something that seems confusing, please ask any questions you have, and I'll happily answer them. 
and we'll keep this video around for posterity. So in the future, people come check and go, oh, okay, that's the thing I didn't get now. Hopefully I get it now. I'm gonna get more water as uh, you guys think. Yeah, we're going to get the rollbacks very soon. That's actually the next step. We're getting to the juicy stuff now. Also, I want to make sure is the uh, audio level is good. Everybody can hear everything just fine, right? Sweet. Put a little bit of uh, background music, more foreboding <laughs> stuff. Cool. I don't really see any questions here, so uh, let's move on, shall we? This is going to be like a, a two. It's like a two-part, you know, a doubly long lecture here. It's almost been an hour. These are the worst in college. I hated these. Like, I didn't want to go to class every day, so I was like, I'm gonna take the the extra long lecture so I can go less often. Boy, that was a mistake. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Moving on. So we have this whole scheme of updating our input delay when the internet environment changes, or when when the quality of the internet the connection changes. When latency goes up, it drops down. We, we can actually lower the input delay if we want to. Awesome. We stay synchronized and we don't have to wait on the other opponent's input. What's the problem though? Well, for most people probably it's fine. I mean, if you, if, if you don't think about it too much, you go, oh, okay, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with constantly changing your input delay? Well, as players uh, who, who want to play a game and get predictable results when you press a button, you expect something to come out consistently every time uh, with a certain amount of lag on screen. If it, if it suddenly goes from coming out one frame later to seven frames later, you can't really predict what's going to happen when you press a button. You're no longer playing a competitive game, right? Both you and your opponent, it, it feels random is one act way of saying it for a lot of people you it's unpredictable what happens when you press the thing and when you can't predict what happens in a game it's no longer fun for the most part right in in, in games in general you you expect certain results when you take certain actions but that's not happening here and obviously it feels terrible you have like visceral reaction to you think you have like direct control of a character it's like an illusion right when you're jumping around it feels some way you're like directly connected to the character on screen but if if some reason your jump now comes out much later, it, you you've lost this like direct connection you have with a character on screen. It, it just feels terrible. Everybody's had this experience. So, how do we deal with this? We know if we keep the input delay the same or low or the same, that would solve the problem kind of right. Your 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 moves would come out when you expect them. Right. Even if it's like some input delay added, if the ping was low, we could keep the input delay low and and and, and static and not have it change. You can get used to that. The results that happen on screen are predictable; they're expected, and you 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 maintain that direct connection with the character on screen from your button presses to the changes on screen. But we know we can't do that here, right? If the uh, latency online goes up, if the lag goes up, if ping time increases, we have to increase the input delay. So what do we do? How do we keep the input delay consistent? 
well, we kind of contradict ourselves in a way. You know, up here previously, we showed if we don't wait for our in, uh, opponent's input, we desynchronize, right? Our screens get different results. If we, but the, the nice thing about this, this part, this, uh, this scheme here, well, bef before we actually waited, right? I wish I had draw, <laughs> drawn a diagram. The nice thing about it was we don't have any input delay on our side. We can immediately have results happen on our screen instantly. So ooh, I'm messing. I don't want to drag that around. Oops. <laughs> Let me fix that. I thought preview. Uh, I thought this was locked. Give me a second. I didn't want to mess with that. OK, I think we're back. Uh, yeah, lo block preview should have been set. I don't know. I'm going to lock that. Cool. Oops. I'm not an expert streamer. Leave that to, to professionals. Anyway. So I'm just going to diagram this real quickly. So it would be great if we could just apply our inputs immediately. We see our results on our screen, screen <laughs> on our screen instantly, right? So in this imaginary scenario, we can see our screen, this frame, this blue frame here represents the first frame of our game on my side and their side. We see it instantly. Um, and we apply our own inputs f in order to, to show that, that image, right? To be able to update the game for the first time. But we know when we do this, and we don't have our opponent's input as well, we see different results, right? Our games are not consistent. So we could apply one of the previous games, but then it just takes away this whole benefit of it, applying stuff of uh, having no input delay on your side. So what do we do? There's something kind of nice about this thing we explained before, this whole lockstep thing, where you wait for your opponent's inputs and you apply them at the same time. We know if we apply both of our inputs on the same frame on both sides, we'll get the same results, we'll see the same thing. What if we just, we do that, right? We still apply the same input on both sides at the same time. We do that, but we don't show that result on the screen immediately. We show this desynchronized, this inconsistent state immediately, right? And while that's happening, our inputs are traveling across the internet. And again, let's just say 50 milliseconds. Oh, 30, 50. So we see our result is inconsistent. It's not the same screen. But at least our game doesn't feel laggy, right? It feels, it feels still feels good. If we follow this whole lockstep scheme that I mentioned before, our, games will, our game will be consistent. It will be the same. So let, let, let's just imagine we had two games on our side. Or we didn't have just one computer. We had two computers. We had one showing the the, the instant but desynced version of the game. And we had another computer delayed, right? It's waiting for the input from the opponent. It's delayed, but it was consistent. What if we could somehow switch to that one every time we got the input? That consistent version, right? That, that consistent version of the game, that consistent instance of the game, what if we can like copy that over to our main computer that we're playing on? Well, this is actually what we do. So when we receive input from our opponent, the player two side over here, what we do, and this is, a, this, this is the part you guys are waiting for, is we roll back our game state and we rerun all those inputs that we've received over the internet again to generate a consistent game state. So this is where our rollback frame happens. I'm gonna put R, I don't know if it's easy to see or not. Um, so when we receive the input, we roll back. Now rollback's kind of a tricky word. It's more like what I explained before, 
we have two computers running. One's only updating when it gets the input from the opponent, so it stays consistent. I have another computer running, your opponent has another computer running, and they're running, they're updating using those same inputs on both sides. And what we do is we copy the game, the results of running uh, that second computer. In this case, it's a secondary code path, but don't worry too much about the details there. This abstract computer, this idea of a computer, we copy its, its memory, its state, over to our main computer when we receive, when we, after we've done all the updating, right? So now our game looks more like their game or both of our games look more similar than they would. This is another point. The longer we wait to apply their input, right? If, if ping time goes up, that is a terrible looking R. <laughs> uh, where's my red? Did I lose my red? I have two blue pins. This, oh, well, this program is buggy. Anyway, I got somehow my bread is gone. I'm very sad. <laughs> um, okay, getting back to the point. So the longer we have to wait to do this whole scheme of like copying over the consistent version of the game, the more noticeable the desynchronization will be. Desynchronization will be, right? The inconsistency will seem more obvious. These are things we refer to as rollback artifacts. Um, I, I want to draw a kind of like, so we have a secondary frame that's been generated from the second computer. The consistent version of the game state, we're going to copy back over to our, our computer, our, our uh, inconsistent version, right? We're going to copy that. Because we know it stays synchronized, again, because we're running the inputs at the same time on the same frame as our opponent's opponent is. Same input, same time. That's the important thing. So we know the secondary computer stays synchronized. And we know its state. If we just copy it over to ours, if we just copy the memory, our game's just going to look more like their game does, right? And in this, this is a scheme we keep repeating over and over and over again to stay synchronized. We're able to keep our input delayed low. It doesn't, doesn't need to change. Our, the input delay is now decoupled from the synchronization, right? It doesn't affect what we're seeing on, our input doesn't affect what we're seeing on screen. Only th theirs will have some effect. Uh, in particular, the longer you wait for their input, the longer we have to wait to do this whole copy operation, right? And the longer the two game, the two computers on both sides, their computer and our computer diverges, right? They have more time to be different. And then when we do the copy operation, and we see the screen update, it's going to be more obvious to us. The, those are like the rollbacks we start seeing. When we, and most of you probably have experienced this. When you see lag go up, you see more rollbacks. There's something to solve this, but uh, I'll get to that here in a second. Okay, I'm going I'm to check everybody's questions and uh, answer them if I can. Okay, I'll read your question because it's already passed uh, the log, I think. Uh, ISUS says, does this rely on some sort of clock synchronization between the two players and does clock skew affect things in practice? I assume you're holding the local player's input in a queue and using some time stamping mechanism to determine when to play back. Yeah, there is a queue for input, and there is a uh, there is a clock, um, there is a timer that a timestamp, so to speak. The timestamp is very simple. It's not real time. It's uh, just the count of times we've updated the game. So when we actually record our input in the queue, we record also which frame it was read at, or in other words how many times we've updated the game up to that point. And that way, if we know what frame this was recorded on, we send it to our opponent, they know where to apply it 
on the second computer, so to speak, right? They know when they can actually use that input. So we get the same results on both sides because we're applying the same input again on the same frame, as, as was mentioned many times before. So are there are four instances of the game, two on P1, two on two. This is, uh, there's not, in, the, in reality, we don't actually have separate instances. <laughs> and the reason we call it rollbacks is uh, for convenience, what we end up actually doing I was going to skip this explanation because it is it gets confusing and it causes confusion all over the place. But I might as well say what it is. In general, we don't actually run two instances of the game, right? We don't run a synchronized one and, and one that stays desynchronized and partially synchronizes. What we actually do is we keep track of the most recent synchronized game state in the past. One where we know we had both players' inputs. And when we finally receive the input, you know, over on this frame here, what we do is copy that old game, that consistent game state into ours, and then we rerun, right? We, we roll back, that's the copy operation, and then we rerun each frame with all the inputs we've received so far. And in this way, we have a more consistent game state because we've applied their inputs, right? Step by step by step. Once we reach a frame where we don't have any inputs anymore, we just keep updating. And, and we desynchronize a little bit, but that's okay, because we're going to fix it later when we receive inputs. But that's why it's called rollbacks, because of that. It's an implementation detail, and I wish it's a, it's, a, it's a catchy name, but I wish it wasn't called rollbacks, because it's only a kind of implementation detail. We don't technically have to do that. We technically could run two game instances if we wanted to, right? And then just copy. But anyway. So I've got some questions here. So Dusker, Dusker says, or Dusker asks, so most games only store two states right, current state with prediction and last known input frame. And everything, every time we need to update, we might need to compute multiple frames at the same time, uh, same render frame is correct. Okay, yeah. So what Dusker is saying is correct. We only technically need to keep track of the most recent uh, consistent state and our current state that we're seeing on our screen. The truth is though, we can get some benefits by recording every frame, every predicted frame, right? I haven't talked about prediction yet, but we could call every desynchronized game update a prediction, right? We're just guessing what our opponent is going to be doing. We could, we could say that. And we could also store that whole game state right every time we update and in that way if if we go back and see our prediction is correct we don't actually have to update that game frame again and what i mean by prediction being correct the easiest thing to do is just to compare our the input we had guessed for our opponent and what they actually sent us and if it's the same we can skip that update we don't have to do it again we can just boom 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 Now, in the scheme where you have two imaginary computers, you have to keep updating the second computer because it's not doing any prediction, right? It's only updating in lockstep again with the opponent's inputs. But in the scheme we actually implement, the rollback scheme, we can make the predictions. And if the predictions are correct, we could skip those updates and we could save CPU time. Uh, we don't have to do some, when we do rollback, there can be effects that are visible on screen. We can avoid stuff like that. So most of the time with fighting games, because when you press a button, you hold it and you release it over a certain number of frames. So most frames, that predicted input is actually correct. Because we just all we do is copy the previous frame's input. That's the whole prediction, right? There's nothing more to it. And most of the time, it's correct. It only matters when the input actually changes from being pressed to being released or being released to being pressed. That's, that's it. So... I hope this is enough to explain at least the rollback aspect uh, of synchronization. This is the so-called rollback netcode. Um, I could explain how we can combine rollback netcode with input delay to get nicer, uh, less rollbacks. I'm just going to cover that briefly just to say if we add input delay on our side, 
we compensate a little bit for the network lag. We give it more travel time. Um, so our game will be more consistent and we'll see less rollbacks. But I'm not going to go too much into it. It's not important for the conversation. Because <laughs> the next thing is going to be time synchronization. I'm going to show how things can be out of sync. God, I didn't expect it to take this long to get to this point, but we're nearly here. So what is the principle here that uh, as, as a bullet point I want you guys to understand? It's a seven? A seven, yeah. This, oh, this I don't like this. <laughs> uh, this point is that we, we just, we, we just let our game desynchronize and fix it, we, we resynchronize, we re-simulate our game, we, we fix the problem when we do receive, when when we get, we when, when we fix it, when we eventually get the other player's input. So we just let our game desynchronize and fix it when we eventually get the other player's input. That is the, that is the principle here. This is the whole principle of rollbacks. Um, yeah. I hope that's clear. Is there any more questions about this point? If not, I'm going to move on to the whole problem of unbalanced rollbacks, right? One sided rollbacks. Like, why can that happen? Um, Kareen Kuduin asked, does this, or does that mean mashing inputs can cause a higher frequency of rollbacks since the input prediction will be wrong more often? So yes, it's depending on implementation and this is probably most implementations. So, let's put it this way. If you do prediction, if you do like preemptive saves of your game state and you're checking input, yeah hitting inputs more often will lead to more rollbacks. And if that's the way you, you check is through inputs, yes, it can happen. But many games do, and it's just fine to only store two game states, right? And roll back the full amount every, every time you get input. Now, it's not ideal, you know, if your game is very CPU heavy and you're always hitting that limit of maybe dropping a frame because of performance, you don't want to do that really. But yeah, if we're already optimizing for reducing rollbacks, it's going to cause more rollbacks with more input. But you have to be very quick to affect that. And the thing is, like, you're only going to see an effect on screen if you're, say, at neutral or your inputs can actually have an effect on what your character does. So if you're stuck in a combo and you're not doing a burst or something, mashing shouldn't have any effect. If the game is poorly implemented and the rollbacks cause uh, slowdown, yeah, it's going to be a way to exploit problems in the game. But engineers really should make sure that their games can handle uh, up to the most conceivable max amount of rollbacks you'd a ever actually want to uh, have online. Yeah, like I think Mortal Kombat. And in Justice, they are able to handle up to eight frames, which is plenty because you multiply eight frames by, I don't know, 16.666 something milliseconds. You're going to get close. You're going to over like over a ping of 300, right? Something like that. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not 300. It's like 260 something. But yeah, if you do 10, you're going to get close to that. So um, Shinku Adol can ask about skipping intro, for example. I want to get to that later again. I'm not. I'm still, I'm not talking about this desynchronization stuff yet. Um, yeah. So what 
Keats is saying is very important. Most of the time in fighting games, your action is very committed to. You have an animation you follow through. So your inputs won't affect what's happening. Most of the time. Um, let's see. Datagram has a question. Does this change if the game is running on PC where you can't guarantee hardware performance? Um, you, this is where you generally have minimal specs for your game. Um, and if the players are not checking the minimal specs, uh, it will, things are up in the air. It, it, ideally, games have a performance check mode to make sure that when you go online, your computer is up. Um, you know, other players know they're playing people who have enough uh, power on, on their system to actually, you know, fully roll back if they need to. Uh, Isas asks, when you roll back in the case you described, actually only one other player has to re-simulate the client which predicted incorrectly. Does it mean that the least to distinct between the two clients? Or is this one side rollback issue? Uh, I mean, both sides are constantly making predictions and being slightly different, right? But that doesn't matter because we're correcting all the time and it's happening so fast and such a high frequency that most of the time you will not see the difference. Take a short break. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Let's see if anything's got brought up here that I can answer. Okay, it's good that we're talking about performance because that's gonna lead into the next problem we need to solve. <laughs> okay, so I think everybody's good. There's no more questions about the rollback scheme in general. I can move on to the next thing. I think this is what people have been waiting for. It's not too complicated once you know everything up to this point. But I'll still take it slow. Okay. Alrighty, so yeah, so what happens if we don't, if we're not able to keep up performance with our game? Well, let's, let's be more basic than that. I also want to ask a question. Give me a second here. Hmm. So DN2 asks, can you have the game tick be locked and the render doing more than 60 FPS? Yep, you can do that um, if you want. Cool, so moving on. So let's have the same scheme that we had above, right? Again, here's our timelines. Play, player one side, player two side. So we're happily rendering our frames, updating our game. Do, 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 do. I wish I had my red color back. I don't know what happened to it. So both sides, we're doing this. We're transmitting our input, eventually getting on each side. And when we do, 
we roll back, right? P big R here for the rollback frame. But what happens if for whatever reason, our game can't update on one side? Say your opponent, I don't know, something happened. Something big effect in the game happened, or if you're on a PC, another program interrupted the process. So you get you get a big blank space here. I want to represent with a W for weight. So you have, you have a frame where you, instead of updating, your game just waited, and then eventually you can update again. During that entire frame, we didn't record any input, and we're unable to apply the input locally, right? So nothing gets transmitted from their side to our side. So. We're fine. We updated our side, right? We still updated. We're over here. Let me start adding. Let me start counting these frames. So we got one, two, three. Even the four back. This is the fourth frame is rollback frame. We get to frame five. We're counting on their side. One, two, three, four. Oops. So nothing here. We waited. So frame five, the fifth time it was updated, was delayed by a little bit. This is delay in real time. You know, these green arrows represent. Reality is actual time that's passing by. It's not just in the game. But they do send it to us, right? So we're updating still after frame five, we keep going. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna go ahead and write it here. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Um, they're on their side they get six, seven, eight, and nine here. So we send our input at frame five, right? Um, and it arrives three frames later for them, right? One, two, three, four. It's, we say frames, but we're talking about re real time. We're talking about like 50 milliseconds here. So it takes 50 milliseconds to arrive on their side in real world time, right? So. So uh, one, two, three. So it's going to be applied. They're going to be able to roll back at frame seven. We didn't have any input for them, right? They were able to send it at frame five, right? Um, but because you had to wait, you don't have that travel time. Well, yeah. so basically, their inputs get delayed for us effectively because they're updating frame five later than us. Right, so normally we'd expect their input on it should be uh, that they recorded on frame five, three frames later, so one, two, three on frame eight. Right, we expect it at frame eight, but because it was delayed by a frame, we can't use it. We can't roll back until frame nine. So frame nine becomes our rollback frame in this case. So do we have a racer? I don't think we have a racer. Oh, we do have a racer. Cool. Um, so that's no longer. A normal frame. That's the rollback frame, frame nine. Check the chat here. Um, and their rollback frame will happen on frame seven. Hope I counted that right. The important thing is it's, yeah, one, two, three. So yeah, frame seven, this would be about, I'm going to draw this to make it clear. So between frame Hold on, one, two, three, yeah. So between frame four and frame seven, this is, uh, in this case, 50 milliseconds, right, have passed. By the time they set their input, it was, you know, one, two, three. It was delayed by a little bit, but it's still 50 milliseconds, right? It's still 50 milliseconds travel time both ways. We're assuming consistent input. All right, sorry, consistent in internet latency. Okay, so what's going on here? What we're seeing? Well, first of all, we're rolling back at different frames, obviously. That can happen, it's fine. But what, what's the difference on, on my side, on player one side versus my opponents? What do we see? Well, the first obvious thing is I get their input for frame number five down here a frame later than I would have previously. 
What effect does this have? Well, it means when I do the rollback, the restore and re-simulation, the whole, at, the whole thing where I have a second theoretical computer <laughs> running the thing, the more important thing is my game, instead of being out of sync for three frames, like it would normally, it's actually out of sync for four now. It's, you know, it's, how do I, let me count this. Like one, two, three, four. My game is more out of sync, more decoupled, more inconsistent for longer. Well, it becomes more inconsistent and is, is not fixed for a longer period of time. And as mentioned previously, when we do this fix-up operation, we, we copy over the true game state to ours, the synchronized one. We, see, we can see an effect, especially the longer it takes to do that, the bigger effect we see. So the rollbacks are more noticeable now because it's taking more time to get their input. The travel time across the internet is the same, but because their game is now behind ours by one frame, it takes one frame more to get the correct input for the frame we need to synchronize. But conversely, strangely enough, as we can see, we are able to update that fr during that frame where they had to wait, where their game stuttered. Um, so we recorded our input and then we sent it to them, as you can see here. So what happens on their side? Well, that 50 milliseconds passes by and it travels to their client the entire time. So they update frame five, one frame passes, right? On their side, one frame, I think right here, second frame passes. And look at this, they got input after only two frames. So on their side, they're able to roll back and only, they only need to re-simulate or they only need to be out of sync for two frames while we're stuck at four. So that delay, that uh, frame drop that happened gets sent over to us in a way. It becomes kind of latency, extra latency we have to deal with. And, but on their side, they get an advantage now because they have to wait less time for input on our side because they're a little behind. They get the input they need much sooner than we do. So th their game is more consistent more of the time. This is the one whole problem that a lot of games are dealing with where a frame gets dropped, there's some performance issue or whatnot, there might be other causes of this. There's a lot of reasons that you could somehow not update your game in, in sync with your opponent like that in a, a consistent 60 FPS. So as long as we don't correct this problem, it continues on and on and on and on, and it can give you more out of sync, of course. The more frames we drop, the more out of sync it can become. And one side will have an advantage over the other because you're seeing what is closer to the true game, right? The true synchronized game on one side and less of the true game on the other side. And the effects of rollbacks will be more obvious on one side and less obvious on the other. Things like characters teleporting and stuff like that will be more pronounced on the side that didn't drop a frame and less pronounced on the side that did drop the frame. So I'm gonna... This is going to be our eighth point here. Can I put a, oh, it keeps doing this. I really want to find a better tool. Okay. So our eighth point is when we fail to update the game on one side, Desynchronization increases for the other side and decreases on this side. 
I could probably state that better, but that's the main point of this. When we fail to update the game on one side, desynchronization increases for the other side. Or sorry, <laughs> desynchronization increases. Uh, so increases. Yeah, it increases for, let me restate this. When we fail to update the game on one side, desynchronization increases. Oh, sorry, I should state this. When we fail to update the game on one side while continuing, while continuing, continuing, continuing to update on the other. When we fail to update the game on one side while continuing to update on the other, desynchronization increases for the other side and decreases on our side. The point here is you'll see more rollbacks on one side if the other side drops frames and we don't do something about it. Is there any confusion here? Any questions? Sorry, I, this long roundabout way to get here, but this is the whole problem. And I hope everybody can get a good understanding of it. Okay, it looks like a lot of PC discussion, so I don't see uh, any questions at the moment. I'll give a few moments for anybody who's confused, trying to figure things out, to figure it out before we move on. Almost lunchtime here, so it's perfect timing, because I'm going to get to the final point explaining how we solve this. It's just a little bit of an adjustment, and that's it. I'd originally like planned to do a supplementary lesson after this with all the math involved, but I'm realizing now like just the basic overview is going to take is taking quite longer than I thought. Well, if it, if it's anything remotely to the quality of a lot of uh, GDC talks, uh, it makes me very happy. Um, I think the whole thing with GDC talks, well, you can take questions too, so it's the same. So this is a little more delayed because I have to wait on the chat to update. And no. okay. <laughs> Actually, the funny part, of datagram. I did have I have a little bit of a script here, but it's mm. I, I on the fly I had to adjust some things I thought was unclear to be more clear and yeah you want to adapt to the questions people ask so and if you want like more detailed explanation for some of this stuff there is a uh, great talk from NetherRealm on the GDC vault and it's on YouTube called like eight I think it's like eight frames in 16 milliseconds or something no uh, well I'm gonna get there destiny this is what I'm about to explain so this is the mistake right here. Like what I just explained here, dropping frames and doing nothing about it and the game staying desynchronized. That's the whole problem. It's, e it's an easy mistake to make, but it's also an easy mistake to correct. So. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna move on. So we we have this whole scheme, right? Well, and it leads to a problem if we don't do anything about it. That problem being inconsistent rollbacks. Well, let me restate it. One side having more rollbacks, one side being more out of sync than the other. Okay. Oh, I guess this board has a limit on its side. Oops. I can't copy paste that again. That's annoying. <laughs> okay. Oosh. Let me do this again. Copy. Okay. Come down here. 
I don't know where it, how it decides to paste this stuff. <laughs> Seems to be completely arbitrary. Okay. Anyway. Cool. So we have this problem. If one side drops a frame, the other is out of sync, more out of sync than the one that dropped the frame. How do we solve this? It's actually very simple. One thing you could do is try to speed up the side that dropped a frame. That's one way to handle things, but you have a problem is like, if, if you run a little faster, it's gonna seem a little unnatural and you potentially drop input that players trying to, you know, trying to press on their controller. But we, what most games actually do is we detect when somebody's dropped a frame by looking at when we receive the inputs, because we expect it to come at a certain time, right? We, we, we're constantly pinging the opponent where we see when these things happen. So if we see a drop frame here where the W is, we in kind need to drop a frame to stay in sync. So we're effectively synchronizing frame drops. So we see this frame over here at frame five. We get we receive it here, right? But we don't roll back immediately. We could. Hold on. I I want to explain this clearly because I'm a little afraid it's going to get confusing if I don't if I try to explain if I mix too many things here. But so let's, let's avoid the discussion of when to roll back first. Let's not talk about that for now. Let's just talk about this whole problem. So. Once we finally get, this is kind of be abstract here, so I'm gonna to wanna to be clear. Let's erase some of this, these frames. Oops, I don't wanna erase those. Okay, this, I'm a little frustrated. <laughs> this tool doesn't work exactly like you expect other tools to work. Okay. Oh. Give me a second here. This is with my Wacom tablet, Wacom, my Wacom tab a little bit. Okay, Go, come over here. Okay. So when we detect, what we need to do is when we detect there is um, a frame drop here, W for wait. We also need to wait on our side. So we'll see that we're now ahead and they're behind once we receive, say, their frame number five. So we're, we're going along, we're going along. Oops, we notice that they've dropped a frame. Because look, we've counted four frames have passed when we expect three. Again, it was 50 milliseconds. One way travel time was about three frames, but it took four somehow. We expected to get frame number six over here, actually. We didn't get frame number five when we expected. We expected to be here right before frame four. So what we have to do on our side is also wait. So we don't have frame number nine here. We update the next frame. And then we're now at frame number nine. And, and you can see we're now synchronized in time with our opponent. We're able to send and receive, we're able to receive inputs from them just when we expect it. We've reduced our amount of desynchronization by waiting one frame. I hope that's clear. That's the solution. That's not that hard to implement. Um, I wanted to get in the math of doing it, the time synchronization stuff, um, but it might be something I do later. It's a little too tricky for now, and lunch is coming up. So, getting close to uh, the hour and 40 minute mark here. So, maybe it's because it's not enough, I don't have enough blood sugar, but uh, it feels like this is a good point where I can ask is there any questions? Oh, oh, I should add the, I want to add the final bullet point, actually. This is bullet point number nine. 
Oosh. Okay. So, nine. To fix one, let's say, unbalanced. To fix unbalanced um, rollbacks, we must force one side that we need, we must force the player side on well, the player who, who is ahead as uh, me be more clear we must force the side that is ahead to wait for as many frames as needed for the opponent to catch up So to fix unbalanced rollbacks, we must force the side that is ahead to wait as many frames as needed for the opponent to catch up. In other words, when your opponent drops a frame, we must drop a frame too, in, in, so to speak. Yeah. There, there's a lot of techniques for smoothing this out. For the most part, if you only drop one frame at a time, you don't do it in um, a sequence, it's unnoticeable to players. And I really could go into all the ways to make it like less noticeable and all the things you could do. There's a lot of stuff. But for the most part, this is the simple fix that solves one-sided rollbacks. I'm going to go grab some water. If there's any questions, please ask while I'm gone. So asymmetric latency. So also ISO's, ISO is asked, does this run into the issues when you have asymmetric latency? Are there ways to handle that? Asymmetric latency, okay. So basically what he's saying is one side takes longer to transmit input on one side than it takes to receive it. So for example, in this case, Maybe it takes 30 milliseconds to get your input, but it takes 80 to send, sorry, it takes uh, 70 to send it. So still same round trip time, but of course on asymmetric, asymmetric connections like that, which is probably more common than you think, it could run into an imbalance. But we end up, what we end up doing to synchronize, to, to kind of smooth out a lot of these issues, is uh, in our code, and that's why I want to get to the math of this, in our code that actually detects these um, desynchronizations, we kind of average out the time it send, takes to, uh, or how many frames have passed on each side over a large set so that it kind of smooths out a lot of those problems. But that's more in the math side of the stuff, and I don't really want to cover it now. But yeah, there's, there's ways to deal with it. Um, I keep seeing this thing like, yeah, Shinku Hadoken asks, I, um, I see smart stuff, but in badly implemented rollbacks, for example, this could cause even more issues too, right? So the thing I didn't make clear is that this time desynchronization can happen even in input delay based netcode. I kind of wanted to cover how it can happen, but uh, suffice to say it's possible, but it's a little more oopsie. But I've seen it happen. Usually it's more of a few frames when it does happen. Yeah, but it it, it can only get so far out of sync. Yeah. Let's see what people ask. I See, Keats is answering a lot of questions. That's thank you very much. Thank you, Keats.
Um, wait around a little bit, a few more minutes if people want to ask questions. Um, yeah, I'll double check the make sure this gets archived and hopefully I can upload it to YouTube or something, or at least pull it down, pull down the VOD somehow and then upload it myself. Dusker, thank you for coming by. I do appreciate people come by and are interested in this stuff. I think it's really important to preserve like, these things that are these techniques that go into making fighting games. Um, there's a lot of like there's like a lot of internal knowledge that doesn't really get shared with the world, and they might die with some of these developers once they retire. You know, it's kind of sad. So. In the future, I do want to share more fighting game specific techniques, like how do you actually make all this stuff in fighting games work the way they do and feel the same as they do in older games? Because, yeah, a lot of those guys have either retired already, the guys who made Street Fighter, or they're retiring now. And if we don't preserve the knowledge, they have to get recreated, right? And if it gets recreated, it may not be as good, or it's just, it feels like a waste to have to redo that work that people have done, spent, spent thousands of hours, in, and maybe tens of thousands of hours in uh, creating, so. Okay. I think I will uh, chill just for a little bit longer, then I'm gonna grab some food. I am in a desperate need of some ramen. Actually, today is a little dreary, so it's a perfect hot, hot ramen broth kind of day. Yeah, as Keith says, like this stuff is not available out there. You're just not going to find this search on the internet. I pay attention to a lot of uh, these fighting game developers who are trying to learn this stuff and it's just like they're always talking about like how they can't find anything. You know, so many other genres you can just find tutorials for making these games online but there's just nothing out there for fighting games. Not, nothing in detail. Not, not the important stuff anyway. Like feel of the game. How do you make the game feel right? Because so much goes into not just the programming but like you know the animation, the design, timing, Uh, my ramen of choice. I'm really like Shoyu ramen. It's like a Tokyo Tokyo style. But I live here in Yokohama. There's a style called EAK. It's the Yokohama style ramen. It's more. It's a tonkotsu broth. It's very fatty. Um, it's very oily. It's very filling and very good for a cold day. Yeah. I, I do enjoy it sometimes, but it's a little heavy to eat all the time, especially in the summer. It kills me. Liquids asks, are there techniques that can be implemented to make a rollback implementation like Strive Handle Packet Loss so well? Uh, is it coded animation? But there, there are techniques for handling packet loss. Um, one thing, you can just retransmit the packets when you detect they're gone. Or just the simplest thing is just to transmit multiple packets of the same input. The, real, the reality is we don't send a single input per packet. We actually send a window of inputs that covers several frames. And because we have a time code on each input. Um, if we drop one of those packets, but subsequent packets come in that have overlapping, you know, input windows. So sometimes uh, the packet you get later will have the inputs a previous one did have, but was dropped. We don't have to worry about it. That handles packet loss pretty well. That kind of technique was used way back even just like simple delay based net code. It's not a rollback specific thing. And many games do this. They don't send just a single input. They send a window of inputs, right? Okay. Just a few.
few more minutes, so I will answer any final questions that anyone has. And maybe I'll do a subsequent stream explaining the math behind the time synchronization. It's not too complicated. If you look up any kind of network clock synchronization code, it's very similar. If you just look, look on Wikipedia for like network clock synchronization or something like that. Or network time, you know. There's like network time or like there's like a clock synchronization algorithm that you can find that's this pretty much straight up is what you used in a lot of games. See. Yeah, fighting tools are an interesting aspect of it. Many companies don't invest in the tools, which leads to a lot of like ad hoc solutions that lead to problems that, you know, down the line for developers. But you know, sometimes you just gotta get stuff done, so you can't really fault them too much. But hey, try to get that budget from their producer to uh, make the tools early on. It's gonna help you. If you have a tools guy, full time tools guy have a much better time al along the line uh, was easy going dude so how do you see things thing going forward with game streaming becoming more popular do you mean like what do you mean game streaming like actually playing a video game on a remote server over over uh, uh you know just you mean like uh what's it playstation now or whatever and uh um, and Stadia, that kind of stuff. I don't, Stadia, I'm just not too familiar with, so I can't really comment too much on it, but you know, that's just gonna, you could technically have two people playing on the same server remotely. You're gonna have input, inconsistent input delay, right? Because one side might take longer to get the, the packets from the server than the other, you know? So you're gonna have another latency based problem that you're going to have to try to figure out how to solve some other way. And I don't know what goes into solving that. And I haven't spent too much time thinking about it myself because it's not a way I actually want to play games. And there's people using Parsec, but like basically they're just running the game on their local computer and the, their friend is like connecting and seeing just basically the, the video of the game stream. And of course, their inputs are going to be laggy, and it's going to feel great for the guy who's running the game locally because there's no time for the input to travel, and there's no, you know, latency and compensation at all, other than that their inputs just kind of arrive when they do, and get applied on whatever frame they come in on. So, good luck with that. I saw some people with some amount of success, but with the AWS, but still, it's going to be very inconsistent. Ugh. All right, guys. Everybody, uh, I'm going to call it. Thanks for coming by. If you have any questions, always feel free to send me a message here or uh, my account on Twitter, CM Zynak. Um, yeah. I hope the explanation was clear enough and maybe it, you know, cleared up some misconceptions or misunderstandings on your on your side, if it didn't, if you understood this stuff already, let me know. Uh, if you learned something, great, let me know as well. I might do something similar in the future, game development-wise, on the stream. So, again, thank you very much. Thanks for dropping by. I'm going to be heading out and get myself some ramen. So, peace, and enjoy your evening, and good night.